Check out my new threads. Now, not only did these students send me this t-shirt, they made a real math video as a tribute to me, featuring some of my greatest quotes like, do something stupid. And we're not gonna do anything stupid today because I got my man Harvey here. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Yeah, all right. Now, you've seen him in action before, right? Knocking down these geometry problems because he can see things that aren't there. So, Harvey, what do you see here? We got, we got these three arcs here. Uh, they're arcs of circles that have radius four units, and the central angle measures 60 degrees. How do we tackle this problem? What do you see? You just subtract the semicircle from the equilateral triangle? What is he talking about? What, what, what do you mean? I, I don't see... I see arcs. I don't see a semicircle. I don't see an equilateral. What? Finish the circles. Okay. I'll finish the circles. I'll go ahead and finish off the circles. Draw the circles. Yeah, yeah, Harvey, I know they're not very good circles, but I'd like to see you do any better. All right. Now, okay, I see, I see circles, but you said something about equilateral triangle, semicircle, and what? Okay, connect the centers. Whenever we have tangent circles, we like to connect the centers because sometimes something interesting will happen. And, oh, that's brilliant, Harvey. Oh man, do you see it now? There's the equilateral triangle. And if we put these three little sectors together, each one of these sectors is 60 degrees. And if we put those three together, we have a semicircle. So if we just take this whole equilateral triangle and then subtract out that semicircle, we're left with what's inside here. And that's what we want. Ah, so this is just like that key strategy for finding the area of some weird little region key strategy to, you know, express that region in terms of things we know how to handle. Usually that means cutting up the region into pieces we can understand, but here we go outside, outside this funky little region here, and we see that this little funky little region is part of something bigger, and we understand that something bigger here. That's really slick, Harvey. All right, let's knock down the details here. Each radius is four units. We can find the area of this equilateral triangle by dropping that altitude. This, of course, is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so this altitude here is 4 root 3. So the area of this triangle is half the base times the height. That'll give us 8 times 4 root 3, gives us 32 root 3. Take half of that, and we get 16 times the square root of 3. And then we have to subtract off the areas of these three sectors, put those three sectors together. We get a semicircle. The whole circle has area 16 pi. We're going to take half that for the semicircle, and we'll have 8 pi. And there's the area of that funky little region there. That's pretty slick, Harvey. All right, let's see what you can do with this one right here. We have a solid figure shown that has six faces that are squares, like this one, and then it has eight faces that are these little equilateral triangles. Now, each of these edges has length 2. We want to find the volume of the whole solid. What do you, you, you see a cube? Harvey, that's not a cube. No, no, cube has six faces, period. Only six faces, they're all squares. It doesn't have any triangles. I don't know what he's talking about. It's not a cube. Do you, that's not a cube, right? No, not a cube at all. Oh, you made one. Let me see. Oh, that thing's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me that. Toss that here. Oh, oh. Harvey, this isn't a cube. I mean, this is... What? What? What's that? What? Use my imagination? <laughs> that, that's funny, Harvey. Really funny. This, this, this is not a cube. I mean, look at, do you see a cube? Do you, you do you, you, oh my goodness. I see it. Do you see it? Check this out. This is the side of the cube. This is the side of the cube. Top, bottom, front, back. That's right, yeah. All we've done is chop the corners off. This figure, this figure is just a cube. And we've chopped each of these corners off. So we can find the volume of it just like we did the last problem. We can view this funky figure here as just part of something larger that we understand. We understand the whole cube. We understand all these little corners. These are just little pyramids we popped off. We can find the volume of this by finding the volume of the cube. 
and then subtracting off the volumes of all those little pyramids. Man, that's pretty cool. Man, this is a funky figure, Harvey. I mean, when I was holding it like this, this, I just don't see the cube at all. But you see that, Harvey? You hold it like, yeah, I know you see it. Of course he sees it. But you hold it like that, boom, you see the cube. Hold it like that, it looks like nothing. But hold it like that, cube's right there. All right, let's finish off the problem here. Now that we see that there's a cube here, let's go ahead and draw it in. And draw that cube in. Draw the front face first. There's the front face. And we'll go ahead and draw in the top. Draw in the top here. And then this side over here. Bring this down, this forward. Now I'll just put in those back pieces. Back edge there, back edge there, and then this down here. And now we see it. We've got this whole cube, and then we popped off these corners, and we're left with that piece inside that we want to find the volume of. Now we're told that each of these side lengths is two. So each of these little pieces here, that's a 45-45-90 isosceles right triangle right there. So all of these edges here, these each have length root 2. Root 2, and there is 2. This is root 2, this is root 2. So the volume of the entire cube is just 2 times the square root of cube. We cube that because the side length of the cube is 2 times the square root of 2. So we'll start off with 2 root 2 cubed, and then we have to subtract off the volumes of each of these little pyramids here. And you can see these little pyramids up here. Here's one right there. This face right up here is an isosceles right triangle, with side length square root of 2. So to find its area, take the product of its legs, that gives us 2. Then divide by 2, that gives us 1. So that gives us the area of this face. Then we multiply by the altitude and divide by 3. That gives us the volume of that little pyramid. That gives us the square root of 2 over 3. Now, of course, we have 8 of these little pyramids, one for each corner that we knocked off there. So we just need to subtract off 8 times the square root of 2 over 3. So now we just cube this out. We cube the 2. That gives us 8 times the square root of 2 cubed. And we're going to subtract 8 times the square root of 2 over 3. And then cubing this out, when we multiply 2 square roots of 2. That gives us a 2. Multiply that 2 by the 8. That gives us a 16. And we still have that 1 square root of 2 remaining. We have 16 times root 2 minus 8 root 2 over 3. 16, that's 48 over 3. 48 minus 8 gives us 40. So this gives us 40 times the square root of 2 over 3. And just like that, we are done because my man Harvey right here did a little inside-the-box thinking.